So we're going to be going through uh, a couple of the rhinos from Rhino Hunt, right? I know there are guides out there, written guides, right? But we're going to do a video guide. So what is Rhino Hunt? Well, it's a CTF that was designed to basically mimic uh, this, this sort of digital forensics process, right? The, the scenario here is that in 2004, New Orleans passed a law saying that possessing nine or more unique rhino photos is actually a crime. Um, so your job as the digital forensics examiner is to, to find out if a crime has been committed. Um, so we get a couple things here. We get the MD5 hashes. We have Rhino Log 1, 2, 3, and the USB file or USB drive. Um, and this is all in a zip folder, which I will download right now. So I'm going to save that. Um, now, what else do we have? We have a couple questions they're going to ask about, right? But we're not going to question, cover the questions too much unless they happen to come up while we look for the rhinos. I just want to show some easy ways to get some, um, some rhinos out of this problem. So first things first, I'm going to look at drsw rodeo.zip, right? That is going to be um, basically the file here. So I'm going to CP this, right, or copy this over to Rhino Hunt. Right, I'm just going to name it rodeo.zip still. Uh, and I'm going to remove it from here. Uh, I probably should have just done MV, but whatever. Um, so for those who do not know the CP command, it's copying this file, right? And it, I just moved it over to my Rhino Hunt folder or directory so I wouldn't clog up my downloads. I'm going to CD now to that Rhino Hunt directory, LS to see the contents, and here is the zip folder we are going to be working with. So how do we unzip a zip by unzipping it? Ooh. Crazy. We now are going to have four separate files, rhino usb.dd, rhino.log, rhino2, rhino3, right? So let's ls that. So first things first, right? You could approach this in a couple different ways. You could either go into Wireshark and look at these three log folders, if that's how you want to go. Um, or you could try to file carve the rhino usb.dd file here. Um, I'm going to start with file carving. I think it's the most straightforward way. My favorite tool for file carving is Foremost. I don't have that on this particular instance of Kali, so I'll show you all how to download that, right? So you get to see the full scope of the tools. I'm going to do sudo to run the next command as root app-get, right? This is a command that will allow us to install other services. Install is the keyword here. And lastly, the command we want to install. It's going to ask me for my password specifically because I did sudo, right? So just keep in mind when you do sudo, you need to remember the password for your account. Now, if you're running the 2021 version of Kali and you type it foremost, it should now appear as green because you have that command. I'm going to do control U to clear the line, right? I, I always like to talk about the shortcuts I use. So I'm going to do, oh, not clicked in, control U, clear. And once again, we are back to step one now with a new tool in our toolkit. So I'm going to use it. All I have to do is type foremost rhino oh, rhino USB. I'm going to hit tab for auto completion and hit enter. So this tool, as I said before, is a file carver. All right, let's see if we could pull something up on it. Let's go to explain shell, my favorite place to explain Kali commands. So if we go to explain shell and type in foremost, right, we'll find out real quick. This will allow us to recover files using their headers, footers, and data stru structures. Um, more specifically, it's, it's basically a file carver. It'll basically take um, a drive that we give it, and it's going to try to parse out as many different files as it can. Here are the different options for it. I love using explain shell because you could put the full command if you really want. Like, let's say I do bash D dash uppercase T and hit enter. Um, what it will do is it'll only pull up the commands, right, that I have, right, the option flags that I put in here. So. Pretty cool stuff, as opposed to reading a man page that's just too intimidating. Okay, my processing's done. It looks like it didn't do anything, but if I ls, we shall see a new directory, the output directory. So first things first, let's cd to that. ls, we see we have audit.txt. I'm going to cat that file. I'm going to cat that. And right now, what we are doing is we are looking at the audit that came out of our foremost command. So we get the version number of foremost, which is pretty interesting. Um, depending on the version number you have, you may get actually different things, right? You may get different results. Um, and it seems like we have seven JPEGs, two GIFs, one OLE. Just to remind you all, right? If we go back to the actual problem, the actual challenge, 
we are looking for photos of rhinoceroses, right, that are hidden in this drive. So J JPG is pretty interesting to us. So I'm going to ls, and I see there's a directory for JPEGs here. So I'm going to cd to change to that directory, ls to list, and now I have a ton of files. Now, there's a couple ways to view images. I like to use the tool feh. I don't have it on this version of Kali, so similar to foremost, you could do sudo app-get install feh. Y for yes, because it will prompt you up there. Right, and now, and now I could use feh on all of these files to do a quick little view of the image. Another way to do it, right, that you may all be more comfortable with if you work more with the GUI, is literally just by navigating to it and viewing all of the JPEGs at once, right? So we see our first two rhinos up here, right? So we've cracked the case for two of uh, the potential um, X amount. You know, we know nine is what it takes to, uh, to classify it as a crime, but we don't know how many are out there, but we found two right here. So first two rhinos, pretty easy, just with the command foremost can be found right here. We also see, and I won't show that in this video, but we also see different images. Right, images of alligators, which is kind of strange, right? So this will bring us to think about maybe there's another image hidden in there, maybe there's some more information. What would especially me lead me to believe that is that there are two images that look exactly the same but have different names. You know, maybe one is the edited version and one is not, but we won't explore that today. So congratulations, if you use the foreman com uh, command correctly, we now have our first two rhinos. The next couple rhinos I'm gonna show you all how to do. Let's get out of this directory and go back to Rhino Hunt. Uh, I'm going to show you how to find some rhinos in these logs. Let's start with, I think Rhino Log 1 is probably the more difficult of the two. I'm going to sudo Wireshark, right? This is a log analysis or network analysis tool, right? So it looks at the different packet captures. I'm going to use Wireshark on rhino.log. I ran it with sudo because you need special privileges in order for that to work. I'm going to make this huge so you all can see it. Expand, 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 expand. And do we need time? Not really. Uh, maybe too big. Cool. I like this size. So first things first, what are we looking for? We're looking for rhinos. I'm going to do control F, right? This is very similar to if you ever worked in Microsoft Word or Excel, right? It's, it's almost like looking for, or it's a fine feature within Wireshark. It pops down this little option bar here. I'm going to change this from display filter to string because I want to look for, similar to control F, I just want to look for a string of words. I'm going to type in Rhino. And as we see, first thing we get here is this Rhino1.jpg. If I click find again, right, still Rhino1. I'm just going to keep clicking until I see something new or until I get to the bottom of the file. I'm just cycling through all these rhino1s.jpegs. It seems like they're all on like FTP, FTP-data. Just gonna keep clicking and then, ooh, rhino3, right? So we found two rhinos before. It seems like there's at least two more in this log. So what am I gonna do? First thing I notice is that there's FTP and FTP, FTP data. So I'll put those filters in here. For those who are not familiar with Wireshark, you could put a display filter. If I type in FTP and hit enter, I will only get the traffic that falls within the FTP protocol, right? So I only see all of the FTP data. If I want to see the full communication, I could right click, do follow TCP stream, and I can see what's going on on the FTP server, right? For those who are not aware, FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol, right? I see that there's this JPEG that's been shared back and forth, but I don't actually see the JPEG itself. So I recognize, hey, that's FTP, but there's also this thing called FTP-data. So I'm going to look at only that traffic now, right? Because it didn't look like the FTP um, filter gave me what I wanted. What we see now is we see the transfer of 1,460 bytes, right? That's pretty interesting. And if I scroll down, I see it's, I have that for both Rhino 1 and Rhino 3. So all I'm going to do to get the full picture is right-click, follow, TCP stream. Now, this may be confusing. You may think, oh, I'm looking at nothing or gobbledygook or, you know, just basically nonsensical characters, but you're actually looking at the ASCII representation of an image, 
right? And this image, to spoil the surprise, I apologize for the spoiler, is a rhino. All we need to do to get this rhino is we have to change it from the ASCII format, because we don't want that. We don't want our picture made of words. We have to change it from ASCII to the raw data. Now, if we save this, it will actually be our rhino. So let's save it as, I'm going to do rhino1.jpg, right? Just because that's what it said in Wireshark. So I'm going to trust it just to keep things tidy. Now I'm going to go back to my Cali. I'm going to do control shift T to open a new tab. So I don't close out my Wireshark instance here. I'm going to do control shift plus, 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 plus to make it bigger for you all. I'm going to do LS and we see this JPEG that I've just downloaded. So remember, we have two rhinos in this output file, right? Potentially more. Maybe I'll go back and look in a second. Um, we have one right here. So I'm going to do feh rhino.1.jpg. And this is now our third rhino. We noticed that in the Wireshark, there was actually a whole nother rhino, right? Rhino three. So I'm going to actually go to that. I'm going to clear out all my filters. Once again, FTP for file transfer protocol, protocol, dash data for all of the packets that are actually sending data across. I'm going to scroll right past the rhino1.jpgs and go to the rhino3s. And I could click on anyone here. I'm just going to right click it, follow TCP stream again. And once again, I'm looking at another rhino. We're looking at the ASCII representation, which we do not want. We want the raw data, right? Because now when we save it, it will actually be what we want it to be. So raw, save as, this is going to be rhino3.jpg. I'm going to go back to my terminal, feh rhino3.jpg. And as we see, this is a new rhino photo. Now, I just remembered in the output, there's actually two more rhinos that I kind of slipped my mind for a second um, in this GIF folder. We cd to it, gif ls, and we do feh, let's do 0010686. So this is a rhino. I actually don't know if this counts because it's a RIN representation or it's drawn out. Um, and then the other photo as well is a rhino. So instead it was 889. And we see this one's a little bit tinier, but this is also a rhino. So if we're counting everything, right, assuming I didn't have any repeats and assuming those RIN ones count, we now have six rhinos in total. Um, let's see here. We also have, and these will be the last two rhinos I show you. Um, actually, before we move off this log, let me show you some more information because there are, there are some questions that come with, with this. So if you want to find some information um, on the GNOME account, right, or some credentials, Right, what you could do is once again look for FTP traffic. Right, since we know that somebody was sending basically those Rhino photos back and forth, what we're going to do is we're going to type in FTP so we only get the FTP traffic. Right click, follow TCP stream again to get the full communication. And now we actually see some credentials here that may be relevant for us. I'm going to click up the stream in the bottom right, just see what's going on. No, one, two, three. It looks like this credential worked because the user logged in successfully. I'm going to see if I find any more info from this. It's like inbox, eh, not too much else, right? Not too much else in terms of just the streams here, or the FTP streams. So we got some info there. The only other thing hiding out in this Wireshark um, is if you look for zip files, maybe hidden dot zip files, you actually will find there's this store dot contraband zip, right? Um, so spoiler alert, if you extract the zip, you actually have to password crack it and there will be another rhino in there. Um, but we're not going to go into that today. We're going to end with the last two that I want to show you in rhino2.log. So I'm going to boot up Wireshark, sudo Wireshark, this time for rhino2.log. And I'm going to show you the way to get two more rhinos. This way is going to be different than last time. I'm no longer just looking for FTP dash data. Um, actually, if I do FTP, right, it, it doesn't show up because these rhinos weren't sent over the FTP protocol, right? They weren't sent over the file transfer protocol. Instead, they were sent via HTTP. 
right? So I'm going to look at the TCP stream. I'm just going to get a quick glance at what's going on. Just kind of flicker through these. Doesn't really tell me anything, to be honest with you, or at least my untrained eye does not tell me anything here. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to clear all my filters out. I'm going to do file, export. This is another trick of the trade with Wireshark, HTTP. This will allow me to see all of the images in all of the different files that were sent via the HTTP protocol. And as we see, we have rhino4.jpg and rhino5. So let me save that. Rhino4, rhino5. Now let's close it out by looking at those files and calling it a day. FEH, rhino5.jpg, .gif, sorry. So we see that. Let's do FEH Rhino 4. All right, so we just got two more rhinos. So as I just said before, right, a couple of different ways to work with Wireshark there. Um, let me open it back up so you all see. Oh, CD oops, downloads. Oop, downloads. Documents. Nope. Downloads Rhino LS. Wireshark. So I'm just booting it back up real quick just to show you. 2.log. So just to reiterate, right, because of the fact that in this capture, in the Rhino 2.log, the Rhinos were not sent over FTP protocol, but instead were sent over the HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Um, it, we will not be able to put a filter up for FTP. Nothing will come up because there's no FTP traffic in this capture. Instead, what we had to do was do file, export objects, HTTP. All right, so we showed you how to find, I think uh, it was either six or eight, six or eight rhinos. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, this video was not for beginner beginners, but was for, you know, like relative beginners to intermediate uh, people who are, are like just familiar with the Linux command line. So hopefully you're able to follow along. If you want a more in-depth or more beginner-friendly version where I talk more about Wireshark or more about um, individual tools, right, like CD, LS, right, individual commands, I'm more than happy to do that. But uh, thank you all for tuning in. Just thought I'd give a little solution here.